Hello, friends. After the high-profile investigation and exposure of a large-scale corruption scheme in Interpol related to Moldova, justice has not been served. Despite all the efforts of the Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office of Moldova and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, due to corruption in Moldova, key figures continue to remain at large. Thus, Vitali Porlock, one of the main suspects, managed to escape to Dubai, where he is now successfully hiding from justice. By the way, there is still no court order for his arrest in Moldova. In other words, legally, nothing prevents the leader of the corruption scheme for evading the international search for drug lords and criminal authorities from returning to Moldova. The next figure is Fredolin Lekar, who, despite all the accusations, continues to live freely. Moreover, Lekar freely travels to Moldova without facing any consequences for his criminal actions. Well, the head of the Moldovan Interpol Bureau, Viral Sentil, who is also involved in this scheme, and I remind you that he was the only major figure detained at the beginning of June, has been released from custody for over a month now, and today he enjoys impunity. This is how justice and the judiciary work in Moldova. But my grievances are not only against the corrupt judges whom Porlock bought through his smuggler friends. Because in addition to the judges, we also observe how the authorities and pro-government media are silent about this unprecedented criminal scheme. Thanks to which our country, Moldova, has become an island of safety for international criminals. We do not see a real fight against corruption in the Ministry of Internal Affairs and other state institutions that have helped international criminals avoid Interpol's international search. There are no arrests or prison sentences for the corrupt individuals, but the most outrageous thing is that while the figures involved in the Moldovan corruption scheme in Interpol are buying their way out in courts, the current Minister of Internal Affairs, Adrian Efros, claims that there are no criminal groups in Moldova Perhaps the Minister of Internal Affairs is not aware, but there are criminal groups in Moldova. Moreover, many of them remain unpunished precisely because of the bribes given to the direct subordinates of the Minister of Internal Affairs, in case he is unaware. Corrupt cops, judges and prosecutors helped Pollock and Lecker not only to remove foreign drug dealers from Interpol's international wanted list, but they also help and continue to help our Moldovan drug lords and smugglers for example, the drug trafficker Konstantin Tutu is not in prison, nor is Oleg Protianu, who was convicted in Italy. In the criminal world, he is known as Borman, and he is also accused in Russia of being involved in drug trafficking, along with the aforementioned Tsutsu and Plahotniuks. By the way, there is information today that he is already involved with Colombian drug dealers in smuggling drugs to North America. Mikhail Reelianu is also not in prison, he is known in the criminal world as Misha Tsigan, also by the nickname Zabar. Raelianu Zabar is also convicted in Belgium, sentenced to seven years. His brother is already in prison in Belgium, but in Moldova, Raelianu Zabar lives freely and comfortably. That is why Vladimir Tataroy also remains at large. He also has the surname Mordar in other documents. In the criminal world, he is known by the nickname Vova Bachoisky. This is another Moldovan king of cigarette smuggling, and by the way, According to my information, it is precisely Bachoy who is involved in the attempts to close the criminal case against Vitali Porlock in Moldova. It was through him and his connections with corrupt police officers that the issue of preventing Porlock's arrest and releasing Sentel from custody was resolved. In general, the list of criminals could go on for a long time. Moreover, I want to specifically point out to Minister Efros, who heads our Ministry of Internal Affairs, that several of his employees are part of these criminal groups. For example, Dmitry Kisnenko, the godfather of Fredolin Lekar, who works as a representative of Moldova in Europol. So, Kisnenko receives operational information about Moldovan groups from partners and quickly passes it on to smugglers through Fredolin Lekar. As a result, dozens of operations in Europe were disrupted when law enforcement agencies were supposed to raid underground cigarette factories. But due to the corruption of their Moldovan colleagues, they found only empty premises. Thanks to Kislenko and Lekar, all the factories were quickly relocated to other places. Overall, all these events clearly show us that the fight against corruption in our country remains only on paper. There are no real actions. There is no justice. People who should be held accountable for their crimes continue to live with impunity and moreover live in luxury 
thereby undermining society's faith in justice and honesty. And in this regard, I address the head of the Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office, Veronica Drogolin. Dear Ms. Drogolin, I know that today some representatives of the authorities who took bribes from Prologue are hindering your full investigation of the Moldovan corruption scheme in Interpol, which allowed him to freely leave Moldova a few days before the searches. But besides you, there is no one today to bring order and deal with this criminal scheme. I am confident that you have the courage and strength to not stop and continue the fight against this criminal scheme, through which international criminals, smugglers, drug dealers and crime bosses have been escaping Interpol's international search. This is your direct responsibility, and I know that you understand this well, and that you want to serve the Moldovan people. Ms. Drogolin, do not kill our faith and prove with action, with a specific criminal case, that you also want to punish these corrupt individuals. As representatives of the public, we cannot remain silent when corruption is eating away at our society from within. We must demand justice and real actions from our authorities. Only in this way can we build a future where honesty, law and justice are paramount.